Alright, here we go. We're transferring out of town here. It's the beginning of Caprock Canyon National Enduro, Turkey, Texas, November of 2020. The transfer left from the high school parking lot, and we're riding right through the middle of town. We've got about eight miles of transfer here. Before we get to the start of test one, So I'm going to have a bit of a fanboy moment here. That group of guys right in front of me is Stu Baylor, Grant Baylor, yeah, Josh Todd, Ryder Lafferty, and I'm not sure who else, but basically they're the best enduro riders in the world. There's my buddy Matt, who's pulled up next to me. And we're going to cut to the beginning of test one. Got to do the old camera check. So for anybody that is unfamiliar with the Duro format, everything's done by minutes. So you start on a minute, those two guys are taking off. And now our minute's gonna pull up. We are on Josh Toth's minute. He's a Pro One National Enduro Rider Factory KTM guy. Also races XC1 Pro and GNCC. And as you'll see, he's much faster than me. Go, we got 10 seconds. So Josh and Matt jumped out in front of me pretty quick. This was the first race I've been to since Shady Burrow with the French finger. And I'd only put 18 miles on the bike before this, so was riding kind of cautious for this first test, just seeing how things were going to feel. My honest goal for this event was just to finish. I signed up for this back in March when the race was going to be originally, and then we had to go on a dirt bike communication. And finally getting back after it here a little bit here. As you can see right off the bat, it's dry and dusty. It's Texas. They haven't got a lot of rain. Now it's November and the sun's low, so visibility was pretty rough, at least during the first test. Later on in the day, it got considerably better. Oh, God. 
Had some good goon riding there. Totally stalled up my bike going over that little washout. I don't know if I was in too tall of a gear, more than likely. Just riding lazy. Certainly don't think I hit my back brake, but that's how it goes sometimes. Here goes uh, Ryder Lafferty. As you can see, these Pro One guys are screaming fast. I started an entire minute in front of him, and he's already caught me and passed me. He disappears as fast as he came up on me. It's kind of mind blowing to me how they ride that fast in this dust. The visibility is just pure crap. Here they are, just flying along. I guess that's why they get paid big bucks and have factory contracts. So this pretty much the way all the test one was, just tight, windy single track through the junipers. You know, it was getting rutted out a little bit in the turns, which was actually kind of helpful. Despite the dust, there was a fair amount of moisture down deeper in some of those corners, so traction wasn't really a problem. Josh gave his jersey to the guy running the test tube checkpoint. A lot of these guys that run these checkpoints are local guys. Uh, Texas State Enduro Championship Series put on this race in combination with the Rocky Mountain Enduro Circuit and the National Enduro Promoters Group. So, kind of a sweet moment there, waiting on the clock to roll over. I should add, it was pretty cold out, so Josh had on more than one jersey. Here we go. You can hear me complaining about the dust there. Those guys took off pretty hard. I couldn't see anything going into that corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
watching this video, this is the first time I've ever been right in the middle of a bunch of pro enduro guys. And if there's any one thing I can identify that I do differently from them is I spend way too much time coasting. I need to be more aggressive in those sections between corners about staying on the gas and getting into the corner and setting up and getting right back on the gas again. See right there, I actually overshot a corner and had a run over a mesquite tree. That's why when you race in Texas, you run big moose. Or in my case, nitro moose. It's all the same, I suppose. Texas has this crazy dirt transition where you'll be in this kind of red sand and all of a sudden you'll transfer out onto this white chalk rock looking stuff that the dust like talc powder and coats your goggles and you can't see it all and then right back to red sand again. Ryder Lafferty again, doing his thing, getting after it, making me look like a slow old guy, mostly because I am. Coming up on Matt here. I've known Matt pretty much my entire life. We ride and race together all the time. I was actually in the military with his older brother, who I also have been riding with my entire life. He doesn't do a whole lot of racing, though. He lives quite a ways away from where Matt and I live at in Colorado. He's always busy doing his firefighter thing. Definitely a huge difference between test one and test two as far as how I'm feeling. Definitely gaining confidence back in the finger. Pretty much just took test one slow to see how it would react. 
couple of weeks back when I had test row. My wrist still hurt pretty bad. I actually fractured my finger and my wrist. Didn't do any riding for about 13 weeks, 14 weeks. You know, why go around the trees? Seems overrated. This poor kid had to come over and check out what the letter was on Matt's row number. Rolling up to the beginning of what? test three. That's not gonna happen. The guy was telling me to try to hole shot Josh. I don't have any interest in bar banging with a national pro rider who's in points contention for a championship. So I'm going to try to keep up with Josh here for at least three seconds, maybe four. But just like that, he's already gone. It's beyond my comprehension, as you can hear. He just would disappear almost instantly. Sometimes when you get tired, it's kind of frustrating, but you gotta power through. Mm-hmm. 
never been to an enduro before this is what's considered fast and flowy i don't think they've ever been on anything that's fast and flowy if that's what they think this is but nonetheless this was definitely a more wide open test less of uh, tight winding back and forth through the trees able to kind of find more of a rhythm and just ride a steady pace So that blur that just flew by me, that was Ryder Lafferty again. And it's just incredible to watch. Those guys are so fast. here and it kind of just wound back and forth through this little ravine. It was really pretty and the dirt was wet down there so one area we weren't dealing with dust.
So I just threw these clips in here real quick. I actually forgot to turn on my GoPro for test four. I thought I turned it on, but instead I either turned it off or didn't hit the button. So there's no test four video, but pretty much this is what test four looked like. It was in a sand wash and then we kind of ran in and out of the trees a little bit. Obviously this is a transfer, so not riding super hard, we're just moving from one test to the next. Super pretty wash though. So here we go, test five, last test of the day. This was uh, one of the longer tests. It was also a pro ABL only, so the Sea Riders had already transferred off the course. Uh, if I remember right, it's about 9.5 miles and a little bit more technical and some fast, flowy stuff. We kind of jump up and down in and out of the wash. Tight stuff, fast stuff. There was some access roads that were super fast just all around good cat test probably my favorite test of the day that was. I thought it was Ryder Lafferty coming and moved out of the way and then grabbed neutral. Looking like a total idiot.
cool creek section down here. There's no creek, but a little ravine. road section is basically we're transferring us back up the hill in the middle of the test and then we'll jump back off into the trees here working our way over towards the wash goes a cow. I don't know if you can hear my funny little horn, but I got tired of having to yell at people at these races, so I ordered a horn for my bike, and it sounds like it's off of a British scooter. I don't know, it's a pretty funny sounding horn, but I just wired it into a kill switch. It's right next to my grip, so I can honk at people or cows. cliff edge. I know if you go on over to the National Enduro YouTube page, there's a really awesome drone video of some of the pro guys riding this. It's probably about as technical as it gets in Texas. there could be some pretty nasty stuff they could send us through, but I think this might be Ryder coming up here. Nope, don't know who that is. There was a lot of pro riders that showed up to this, being a National Enduro and the last race of the year. You know, you got your Pro 1, Pro 2 guys all battling for championships, so points and looking for contracts next year so there's a lot of really fast guys somehow or another at enduro races they're kind enough to let us slow guys ride up in the middle of all those guys kind of be like showing up to a supercross and getting on the gate with ricky carmichael i don't know it's it's a cool experience for sure
So at this point in the race, I'm flying up that road thinking that we're getting pretty close to the end of the test, and then they throw us off into more woods riding here, and I don't know if somebody hit the arrows or went through some flagging tape, but couldn't tell where the course was going, and then I was going to go the wrong way right here, and luckily whoever that was yelled at me and let me know that I was about to go the wrong way. Probably saved me a bunch of time that I would have lost if I would have shot up that hill. So, thank you to whoever that was that yelled at me. So if you made it this far, I'd like to say thank you for watching this video. And, you know, my son keeps harassing me that I need some sort of sign-on, sign-off for these YouTube videos. Some sort of like, share, subscribe, guilt trip into creating popularity for these videos. But really, I just post these so people can see what enduro racing is like. And hopefully you'll get out and do it. It's super fun. It's unlike any other kind of racing if you've done motocross, supercross, but that's it. End of test five.